G'day folks, it's Mark Sundon here from Expedition Kayaks in Sydney and this is another one of our famous dubious surf ski reviews. Uh, we've done a couple over the last couple of years with varying degrees of success I reckon um, but here we go again, I'll give it another whirl. Today I'm here to talk about the Think Zen. Um, as we do before I start, um, I want to make it really clear that we're uh, dealers for Think Surf Skis. Think are a, a Canadian company uh, with great success for the last 10 or 12 years doing their own thing, designing their own boats their own way. Um, they are run and managed here in Australia by our mate Stu who uh, operates with a terrific level of integrity and does a great job and we're selling these boats. So I'm not some punter standing here telling you about his great new ski that he'd like to, to, to do a review of. I'm a, I'm a Think um, dealer and, and we're trying to sell you the boat. Um, regardless, we, we sell lots of different brands of lots of different surf skis and we don't owe anything to a particular brand. Um, I think we're fairly well known in the market for being the sorts of guys who if you come in and ask what sort of ski suits you, we'll give you a whole bunch of information. Usually confuse you <laughs> and, uh, and, and hopefully let you make the choice and, and then get out and have a paddle in it. and, and, and you know, work it out for yourself. Most people are good enough to work out for themselves what they want. So my own paddling, I'm a, I'm a waves paddler. I'm not really a racer. I go on a few races that I enjoy. Um, I'm, a, I'm an ocean paddler, so, um, sea kayaker, expeditioner. I, I paddle skis all the way up to the elite level without too much drama, have a good time. Um, don't really time myself or, or do any of that sort of stuff. I leave that to the people who obsess about their speed and, and their heart rate and their VO2. But my, my interest is really, you know, how successfully I'm going to catch the next run that turns up. Um, this particular ski, the Zen, is what I call a transition ski. Uh, I, I think I might be the only person who calls it that, but, but to me, they're, they're the skis that slot in between the entry level boats. So if you think that's the Zen, uh, sorry, the Ace and the, um, the Ease, and their intermediate boats, which is the, the Think Six and the Think Evo. They're designed for an ambitious beginner. They're not beginner boats. Um, I've seen plenty of beginners jump in them and, and you know maybe drop down a cog to the Ace or the Ease because it was a little bit too much for them. But generally speaking, their stability and their performance in moving water, which is you know what these things were designed to perform in, is is very reassuring. Um, they don't take too much dedication to get your head around. And unlike some of the intermediate boats, you. You know, you, you're more likely to be able to start off in one of these if you're prepared to have a go. Um, it, 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 it sits in its own little niche in that um, it has a very scaled down cockpit area. So paddlers in the 50 to 70 kilogram range can actually fit this boat. And what I mean by that is really until you get to the elite boats that are very narrow, it's really hard for a person with small hips or who is light to find a cockpit that, that fits them. Um, and the comparison, my business partner, Rob Mercer, put it very succinctly, you know, it, it'd be like walking into a hiking shop to buy a pair of boots, having small feet and having the salesperson say, here, mate, they're a bit big, but here's three pairs of socks, chuck these on and don't worry, you'll be right. Um, why is it important to have a boat that fits you? Um, well, because contact is often stability. It's often um, um, the ability to make the boat turn and move in ways other than using the rudder because you, you, you know you kind of clench your left bum cheek and the boat will turn right if it's been well designed um, and also windage uh, the, 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 the Zen has a very low wind profile um, you'll notice the shape of that bow there w what that means is if, if, if you're going that way and the wind's coming this way with any strength then the waves will be lifting the bow up the, the wind will be hitting the bow and going bang. So you'll go up, bang, up, bang. If you're not strong enough or you're not heavy enough to keep that bow tracking hard. Now that's not a big deal really, unless that's a cliff or a sand, sandy beach or somewhere you don't want to really go. And it can be quite hard to overcome that, what's called lee cocking without a lot of power. So the less windage the ski has, the, the less likely that is to happen. And the Zen has, you know, the, one of the most frequently um, mentioned pieces of feedback about the Zen is that, gee, it was easy to paddle in the wind. Whereas one of the things you'll hear about some of the bigger volume skis, um, especially from people who aren't very heavy, is 
God, I felt like a cork bobbing around it in the wind. It was really hairy. It felt like a different boat. And that's, that's purely to do with the amount of ski or boat that's presented to the wind. The Zen doesn't have an awful lot of that. Um, so I will run through a few of the features in the Zen. Um, you know, show you some of them. It's not an awful lot of features to mention on a surf ski usually, but I'll give it a whirl. Uh, people seem to enjoy it. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe the next time you're looking to, uh, to, to upgrade or get into the sport, this might be one that you consider. So touching on a few features of the Zen, um, starting at the, uh, at the front like you do, the bow of the boat is a... Um, is a, a very low wind profile. It's a nice sleek entry point, as you can see. Um, as is the modern way, the big sort of battle axe shape has gone because it attracts probably too much wind. Um, and this forward section that runs along to the cockpit is also a lovely low um, profile. Again, that's all about wind and, and shedding water when the boat drops, drops into a hole and you end up with half of it buried and water sprays everywhere. Um, I've never needed a, a deflector on this boat. It, um, it doesn't seem to sort of splash and spray like some of the other, the other shapes do. I'm not quite sure why they do that. Um, some of them you'd think wouldn't and they do and some of them just don't do it and the Zen's one of them. Um, as with all Think boats, you get a, a double uh, strapped footwell. So um, two feet um, in their own spot pulling back and pushing down against that as you paddle through. They all come with these uh, adhesive grip pads, which you, you often pay extra for at other, in other brands. There's a nice big inspection port and breather hole there, so you can have a good look inside the ski if anything is going wrong. That little adjuster there allows you to uh, regulate the, um, the forward and aft settings of the pedals, if you prefer them to be a little further forward or further aft. And the, um, the increments of um, movement of the foot um, pegs is very small. So in a thick ski, you're very, very unlikely to find yourself in between, um, in between foot positions, which is, it might sound like a small thing, but it's amazing how often people can't quite get that right and then they have to do all sorts of exotic things to their seat to make amends. Um, the rudder lines are this sheathed, uh, sheathed Dyneema or Spectra, which is very strong. You could probably tow your car with that stuff. Uh, don't get a lot of failures on them. Um, and uh, it's nice smooth running material, unlike the old stainless steel or even sometimes the Dyneema. The, the balers are a Debrito baler, three settings. The ski will drain quite nicely at about seven and a half to eight k's an hour. So if I'm on flat water, I usually leave it closed, um, open it up when you know a boat wash or something comes over and half a dozen paddle strokes at eight or nine k's an hour and she's all gone. Um, the bucket and the seat itself are very suited to smaller people. So the width up here, where your calves are, people jump in, in this particular boat and, and immediately will tell you how close fitting they feel. The bucket isn't a hugely wide bucket. Um, I mean, I'm a size 34 waist and I get into it fairly snugly, but I can paddle it any bigger than me and you're probably gonna struggle. Um, but it's a, it's a beautiful shape. People love thick seats, they love thick buckets, they love the way they work. Heading down towards the stern, you have these uh, deck bungees. Uh, you know, most of the brands seem to have them. Um, from my background as a guy who can put 30 or 40 kilos in, a, in, an, in an expedition sea kayak and go somewhere, I always think they're a bit useless, but you can chuck a jacket under them or clip a dry bag on if you want. Um, the standard um, screw cap rudder housing um, a nice thing about thick skis, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but the, the top of the rudder shaft is a machined head which slots into this carbon tiller and holds everything in place. That little grub screw there goes through the whole lot. And this little key ring on the top, that holds it all on. So I've actually finished a 100 kilometre race in a thick ski with just that holding the thing on the top. Probably if I'd been in any other sort of race, I would have, any other sort of brand of ski, I would have lost my, lost my rudder clean and Maybe had 30 k's to paddle home in uh, without rudder, without a rudder, which hasn't been a lot of fun. Um, little carry handles on the back. Um, just generally in form, a Swede form ski like they all are. The widest point is just behind where you sit there, I suppose. Um, 
And the secret to all of these boats with their stability is the fact that they carry that volume there aft quite a long way, reasonably wide. That 52 centimetres probably holds through a big enough proportion of the boat to make it feel nice and stable. Um, beautiful lines, nice looking ski I reckon, lots of nice little features on the deck. Now the hull of the ski, bearing in mind this is our demo and it really has had a life these last couple of years. You know, we've been so busy with test paddles. This has probably been out on the water at least two or three times a week. We don't think twice about loaning it to people to go off and have a go on their own if they want to or just lending it to people who want to try to see what it's all about. So it's been banged, bashed around, um, treated very poorly really. Um, and it's the four, this was the 14 and a half kilo um, performance layup but it's damn strong. They're, they're very clever, their construction's very clever. It's, it's a bit little more flexible in points than some people kind of think they'd be, but that's all part of the engineering to make it strong and able to keep it to that weight. You can see if I tilt the camera that way, just how flat that section is through the center. Um, but there's enough V up the front to keep it, keep it tracking. Um, it does, it is one of those boats that when you get a wave and get up on top of it, um, it does feel like it changes gear and that's really because all of this flat section here kind of turns into a surfboard and anything traditionally that that held boats up going back in the old days a big u-shape that had a bit of wetted area and a and a, a frictioned surface suddenly disappears and uh, it does it gets up in planes and runs and goes a little bit faster than you think it would the exit point there obviously for the venturi um, but it's a very clever hull it's um it's 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 a um, a quick enough hull to get waves and stable enough to be reassuring when things start to move. It's got a, a nice rail or chined edge there, soft chined edge, and that means that when you drop it on its edge, there's a huge amount of resistance to it healing any further than that particular point that you can see. Probably the light on the camera makes it look a little more pronounced than it's quite curved, but it is a definite sec definite secondary point. And that, that's what makes this boat a, you know, not an elite boat. That, that secondary point is very pronounced. It's very easy to identify when you get in the boat and drop, drop your bum cheek and, and rest it on what effectively becomes a second keel. Um, and yeah, it, 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 it bounces from, from rail to rail when you're out in the waves without making you feel like you're gonna come a cropper, which is, which is probably the secret to why so many people who aren't so confident really do love the Zen. So, there's a few of the features. Um, you know, the question you get asked is, who's going to buy this boat? Who's it, who's it designed for? Well, weight-wise, um, you know, I can paddle it. I'm about 95 kilos. I like taking it out in beach surf down at Wanda if there's a small surf running. Obviously, if it's a big surf, I'll probably smash it to pieces, so we don't really do that. But it's good fun down at Bay Surf, our local break, where we can get a, a wave that runs for a couple of minutes. I enjoy it because it's short, nimble, manoeuvrable, and I also have about 16 boats back there to, to choose from. <laughs> I just kind of like this one for jumping in and doing that. It's probably not really designed for someone my weight. I'm, I'm, I'm probably about 10 kilos over. But in that 50 to 85 kilogram range, I haven't seen a ski in the last five years that has got more people out on the ocean paddling and enjoying themselves out there um, than than I have people who've got this ski and, and, and taken it on. Now, obviously at 5.6 metres long and, and 50, 52 centimetres wide, it's not an elite boat. It's not gonna crack a run and charge along at 30 k's an hour and, and do it over and over. Um, but ocean paddling, you know, man, sometimes it's just good enough to be out there and enjoying yourself and, and uh, taking it all in and watching those big waves roll through. And, and this is a ski that has enabled people to do that over and over and over again since it was released. Many of whom I thought were absolutely no chance of ever getting out there and doing it. And more pleasingly, many of them have progressed to an, a ski that's a little bit longer, or a little bit faster, and been able to, to, to get the confidence in a boat like this to, to, to keep going and, and get a bit further. Not that you really need to, like I said, being out there on the ocean is actually probably good enough. Um, so that, that smaller person, if you went down to our paddle club on a Sunday morning where there's a, you know, probably half the club are women and of those, the ones that own surf skis, I reckon three quarters of them have got a Zen. Um, 
and they love them. Um, you know, got, got lighter weight guys in that sort of under 80 kilo love them as well, especially if they're going to go out there and, and have a crack at some waves. Um, it's not it's not a flat water fast ski, you know, fast enough. I mean, I, I probably can't make it go fast as fast as it can go on flat water. Um, and, and I did give it to a fella who, who's a damn good paddler a few months ago who was going to buy one for his uh, partner. And he came for a paddle with us in it. And man, we couldn't catch him any which way, out and back into a sort of 20 knot wind again. Um, so I, I sort of stopped telling everybody it was slow, slow then and realized actually probably I'm the one who's slow and my paddle mates probably aren't that fast either. Um, so, so yeah, that, that's, that's probably who it's intended for. Um, um, a, a couple of nice things, you can see this one here is our demo boat um, in these lovely colors. In every single shipment, there are some colors that are downright hideous and really cool and one person will think the hideous one's really cool and vice versa so there's always a lovely broad choice think are very brave and bold with their color choices for their boats and as well as that there's a there's a shipment you know four or five times a year where you can order one and probably wait two or three months and have it turn up in exactly the colors you want which is really lovely they don't charge any extra for that um, so the Think Zen, it's, uh, it's a unique little ski. Um, we, we haven't done a review on it. It's been out for ages now, um, really because we haven't had any real reason because every time they've landed, we've sold a whole lot of them. Um, but it is a boat that I've, I've always intended to get out there and, and say a few words on. Um, I think it's a fantastic ski. Um, it's one of the best selling boats we've ever had and it's sitting here in our warehouse if if anyone's interested if you want to come and try it out we'll take you out for a test paddle if you're in another part of the world then hit up your think dealer for a, for a going one um, and we hope it's in the mix the next time you consider buying yourself a surf ski thanks so much for watching and uh, if you've got any questions or queries chuck them on the youtube link or um or drop us a line at uh, mark at expeditionkayaks.com thanks very much everyone see you later